Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Back to the Future the Game for more point and click adventure game action. We are right back where we left off in 1931, looking for the dock. We know he's here somewhere. Um, I believe that we've just seen a clue which suggests he's over in prison. But um, we'll see. We'll have a look around. What's this place? Not hiring. You gonna buy anything? Um, no. Then get out, Mom. It's not very nice customer service, is it? Um, okay, so there's some law offices here. What's Hale, this say? Zemeckis and Fine, attorneys at law. <laughs> no solicitors. Can we go in here? Maybe we'll have to get them to help us out Hello? of dock. No solicitors. <laughs> Good one. Um, right, what's this? Bank, Bank. of Italy. Does look like that, doesn't it? I've got to say, I love the feel of the town in um, 1931. It's pretty cool. How can I help you, sir? Without any money, I don't really have any business in there. Okay, so maybe we'll have to come back into there later on. Uh, there's something going on in the middle, but I guess we need to come over here. Oh, soup kitchen! This is where the diner is, right? In 1985 and 1955 as well. Oh, we can go in here. Hey, who's this guy? He looks like he might be a relative or something. Cabbage soup, lovely. <gasps> fly. Who's that? Biff? Kid! Grandpa? That's Mr. He is a relative. Duarte. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas <laughs> landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Take that as a yes. You? Uh, no, of course not, kid. Oh, so right. this must be Kid That's Tannen. Better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well, well, what? Biff Stab, what I'm guessing. What are you doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that, and McFly. Yes. That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh, now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. <clears throat> Gangsters then, I'm guessing. Um, did he leave anything on the table? No. What's that up there? Looks like these pipes go into the basement. Okay. Can we go through here? Oh, okay. Only, rummy. Whoa! We definitely don't want to get shot, that is for sure. Um, what's over there? Nice rack. Yeah, we got all kinds of uh, culinary enhancements back there. Ah. I wonder if this is some sort of front. There's like stuff piled up there to block that door as well. I can't quite... There we go. What are those tables for? We keep a few extra tables around for our end-of-the-month hobo soirees. Hmm. I sense something weird going on here. Let's talk to this guy. I <clears throat> wonder if this is some sort of mob front. Okay. Hey, um... Uh, never mind. Okay, he doesn't want to speak to us. Also, guys, um, I'm just recovering from a bit of a cold, so if I end up coughing a bit through this, I have still got a little bit of a cough, so apologies, but Maybe I should um, go to the might jail hit me and a little bit. Doc before I start dialing random people in 1931. Okay, so it looks like we've got to talk to the doc. Um, let's talk to this guy, then we'll go and try and find the doc in the prison. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. Oh yeah, that is true. <clears throat> also, I've got a glass of water just in case. So, if you hear me drinking, that's why. 
Don't want to have a coughing fit halfway through recording. So, we want to go up this way, don't we? Right, there's the soup kitchen. Definitely something suspicious about it, isn't there? Right, here's the police station slash prison. Established 1891. Mill Valley Police Station. Cripes, this place looks old, even for 1931. Okay, there's bars on the windows. Doc! <gasps> Marty! Doc! What are you doing here? You sang for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14, 1986. Einstein. <gasps> the automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Why? Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I uh, traveled 50 years into the past to... I don't think that's cause. true. Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Because you get I'm what looks like shot. My gangsters on the steps of the courthouse. Why would they do that? Yes, they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Did you know <laughs> come up with a plan? A plan, right? But what? I don't know. Uh, let's alert the authorities. Let's go back in time. Let's make a stand. Let's talk to the gangsters. Hmm. We could go back in time, but that could get very messy, right? So I'm guessing, I mean, the authorities aren't going to be able to do a lot. Let's make a stand. Why don't we try to tough it out? Now that we know what's coming, maybe we sneak it past the gangsters with a bulletproof vest or something. That might work with one or two bullets, but from the looks of this article, it appears that I'm going to be mowed down in a hail of Tommy gun fire that rendered the innocent stranger little more than a puppy mass of bones and bristle. Oh, who right? Sounds like grim. According to the byline, one Edna Strick. Oh, of course, it was Edna. I guess. Uh, okay, so it looks like we have to go through all of these. Let's alert the authorities then. Why do we tell the authorities? Tell them what? That my friend from the future has proof that I'll be murdered tomorrow? They'd ship us both off to the loony bin. And trust me, you don't want to see the inside of a 1931 insane asylum. Oh, that is true. There were some really dark things that happened in insane asylums over the years. Trust me. Um, it's horrible, actually. Uh, let's go back in time. I don't, I don't want to do this Lorian. option. Go back in time before you were arrested and stop you from getting caught in the first place. Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Oh, well, that's helpful. Uh, let's talk to the gangsters. Hey, maybe I could talk to the gangsters. Tell them they're about to shoot the wrong guy. I don't think the criminals of this era are going to be very receptive to a complete stranger telling them that their secret assassination plan is misguided, do you? Probably not. Especially given that Biff's dad or granddad or whatever is in charge. Um, I guess I could break you out of jail. Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have rocket a rocket-powered drill? drill? <laughs> Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, so we're going to have to build it, right? My 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great. I'll mm. just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You'll need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me! 1931 me! Wait a minute, Doc. Oh. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! Uh, okay, what about the space-time continuum? How am I supposed to get you to build a rocket drill? Where can I find your younger self? I'm guessing his house. Your yourself caused, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. Right. How am I supposed to get you to build it? How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket drill? Just 
tell him I need to break his older self out of jail? Absolutely no. Not. Whatever you do, you that can't would be tell stupid. my anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Exactly. Well, what am I supposed to Just be your charming Make self. something up. What I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. Alright, so we've got to make him think it's some sort of scientific adventure then. Where can I find your younger self? Maybe he's still okay, at school. Let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why did you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll ah, find me. Soup there kitchen. we go. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. Uh, why? Oh, the old whistling to appear less suspicious I trick. Get started. <laughs> Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. Hopefully. Or things will go terribly wrong and will cause irreparable damage to the space-time continuum, which, you know, we probably want to avoid. Right, let's head into the soup kitchen and give Doc a call. Uh, we're going to have to make up a really interesting story to get away with this, aren't we? Hopefully there's not wrong options to choose. Alright, let's go and use this phone. Just borrowing your phone, mate. Brown result. Uh, hi. Uh, is that a butler? Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Ah, the courthouse. No one. Courthouse? Bye-bye. Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Well, we're going to the courthouse then. Let's head over to the courthouse. So he must have worked there before he got into science. Or whilst he was first getting into science, I guess. Uh, can we just go through the square? I'm guessing we probably can. Oh yeah, nice. Look. I've got to say, I am really enjoying this game so far. I'm hooked on the story already. Oh, look, it's Einstein. Is this our Einstein or young Einstein? Oh, it's got to be our Einstein, isn't it? Doing, it's a pretty stupid thing to say. Einstein would be like, God knows how old in dog years if it was, if it was possible he survived from back here. It would be pretty funny though. Oh, is that him? Touch those. These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Ah, oh, his dad Judge is Brown? Judge Brown? Doc. The judge? Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Michael, uh, Corleone. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Uh... Yeah, with us. Where are you going? Come back. Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. Uh, okay. Uh, what are you doing? What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter. Very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what, what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. Okay, I've gotten something important for you to do. Come on, Doc. Uh, damn it. Uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Corleone... I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society <laughs> It's never going to get old, is it? We in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Every morning. <laughs> uh, I hear you're working on a rocket drill. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm oh, it's law. a secret then. I have absolutely no interest in science. Only yeah, right. Come back here. You I wasn't again? finished. Can't you see I'm busy? Uh, okay, don't worry, I'm a scientist too. See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area. Oh, interest, sure. Which is law, but I don't believe you. 
It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast oh, storehouse no. <laughs> of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bones connected to the thigh <laughs> bone? Amazing. <laughs> Uh, okay, when will you be finished? Oh, Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till nine. Nine at night? But today's Saturday. Nine? So I probably won't get off before ten. Ten? How about quitting early? How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer? Uh, or soda? What do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice <laughs> turning, that's my one But sugary life. beverages, come Besides, on. if I left before eight, my pop would kill me. Uh, you sound a little scared. Like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Uh, apart from the fact that you're doing science. Right, come on, tell me about your rocket drill. Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. The I am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does okay. E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? <laughs> oh, that's the weakest argument about ever. About me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay, he's going again. Um, come back. Harassment's a federal crime, Oops, Mr. press the wrong button there, sorry. Uh, don't worry, your rocket drill secret's safe with me. Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for. In more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! Okay, we're not getting anywhere here, are we? <clears throat> Alright, he's going into the law offices. Maybe we've got to go to Doc and get some more information. That's what I'm thinking. Doc will know what to do to get him to listen to us. Oh, uh, what's going on with the controls? <laughs> I think the camera angle there changing messed it up a little bit. Right, older Doc, I need your help. Psst, Doc! Morning! Have you found my younger self yet? Uh, okay, we can talk to him. Uh, where have you been? Where have you been all this time? I missed you. I've missed you too, Marty. But I thought it was important to let you live your own life for a while. Free from the insanity of time travel. I gotta admit, it was nice to not have my family history blowing up in my face for a few months. Besides, I've been <laughs> busy raising my own unpredictable teenagers. Right, so this is set after Back to the Future 3 then. Um... And it's the same doc. It's not a different timeline doc like I initially thought. Uh, how's the family? So how are Clara and the kids? They're fine, fine. Right now we're trying to decide where to send Jules and Vern to college. Clara prefers the 2020s, but I'm partial to the 1960s. We're planning <laughs> on visiting you and Jennifer in 2011 soon. Me and Jennifer? In 2011? <laughs> oh, forget I said anything. It's just after this game came out. Um... Where'd the DeLorean come from? Where'd the DeLorean come from? The last time I saw it had been smashed to pieces by a train. It's exactly. It's a fantastic story. Do you remember when the DeLorean got struck by lightning in 1955? I do indeed. Yeah. The first movie. Unbeknownst to either of us, the lightning produced a temporal duplicate of the time machine. One that was tossed 70 years into the future. What? No way. I found out about it during a trip to 2025 and recovered it just in time to stop Griff Tannen from vandalizing the time stream. Heavy. So that DeLorean... Whoa. It's for all intents and purposes the exact same machine as the original. Plus or minus huh. little bells and whistles I've added over the years, of course. That's pretty cool. What are you doing in 1931? So, what were you doing in 1931 anyway? Oh, nothing terribly exciting. Indulging in a little personal nostalgia, picking up a few rare out-of-print books to surprise Clara on her birthday, solving a historical okay. mystery or two. The usual. The usual? You lead a pretty <laughs> unusual life, Doc. It's an unusual universe, Marty. Say that again. Um, what happened to the time display? I hate to tell you, Doc, but your last time departed display is on the fritz. It is? So how did you find me? I found one of Edna Strickland's shoes in the DeLorean. How did one of her shoes get in the DeLorean? Einstein, Einstein took it from her. He did? 
How strange. Ivy almost never attacks people. Not without a good reason, anyway. Uh, okay. What are you doing in jail? You wind up we in can't jail know in this. Anyway. During my trip to the past, I decided to look into one of Hill Valley's unsolved mysteries. The fire at the speakeasy. Exactly. I thought I was safely hidden across the street. But when the fire started, there was a tremendous explosion, and I was knocked unconscious by a stray brick. When I woke up, stray I was brick. Here in jail, charged with arson. That's horrible. No, huh. no, worse yet, I still don't know who started the fire. I'm gonna guess that Kid Tannen has something to do with it. Um, what are you doing in jail with Dunn? I saw my grandpa. This who I bumped into at the soup kitchen. My grandfather. No! Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. That we know of. I wish I could, though. This era's tannin is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kit Tannen's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right. Sylvia. Sylvia. Fair enough. Um, about Kit Tannen. What's the story with this Kid Tannen jerk, anyway? Biff's father? By this time next year, oh, he'll be his father. I thought it was. San Quentin. There was even a song about it. Wait, if Biff will be born in 1938, and Kid will be in prison... As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. That's a busy wow. three hours. No kidding. <laughs> he wasn't hanging around, was he? <laughs> okay, about Edna Strickland, then. What do you know about Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we traveled in different socioeconomic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Yeah. Oh, got an admirer. Yes, now I remember. Ask Edna, the etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that That's the consumption the one. of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a long <coughs> Well, gal. there we go. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up in the 60s. She just somehow lost <laughs> her mind. That would explain a lot. An awful lot. Um, I found your notebook. I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Ah, oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that. That's what I keep trying to tell them. That's what well, they're trying to do. You hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986 after we saved me from a grisly death in 1931. First things first, you know. Um, right. I met your younger self. Oh, I met your younger self. Great. And I gotta say, you're kind of uptight. What? <laughs> you won't even talk to me. I find that hard to believe. Tell me what happened. Alright. Well, Emmett says he's not a scientist. I tried asking him about your rocket drill, but he says he's not a scientist. What? What? Oh, uh, father. What's he got to do with this? In 1931, I was still deathly afraid of my father discovering the truth about my scientific predilections. So I carefully kept them under wraps, practicing science at odd hours, away from his prying eyes. That sucks. Okay. That sucked a lot. Fortunately, I eventually stood up to him, but right now, my younger self probably thinks you've been sent by my father to check up on me. Damn. Um, is there something we can do to get him to trust us? What do I do to convince Teen Doc that I'm not a spy? I'm not sure. That's not what I was help hoping for. Right, your younger self mutters a lot. Why does your younger self mutter all the time? Muttering? Why would I be muttering? I, I, I never mutter unless... Uh... The Hill Valley Expo! The Expo? Expo, yes, eh? The Expo! How could I have forgotten? In a few months, the younger me will put on a demonstration at the Hill Valley Exposition, my first public foray into the world of science. Everyone in town will be there, including a number of noted inventors who shaped my career. Ah. So, it was a big success? No, it was a miserable failure. But it was a spectacularly miserable failure, one which marked my transition from an amateur garage scientist into a professional seeker of truth. Interesting. So do we have to help in some way? Why is it making him mutter? What does this expo have to do with you muttering all the time? When I was younger, I used to relieve stress by working on complex mathematical conundrums. No doubt my younger ah. self is working on some impossible problem in an attempt to work off cerebral steam in the weeks before the exposition. What was I muttering about? I don't know. Uh, H to the something when the universe is something else. I I'm not so good at equations. 
That's too bad. I bet if we could solve my younger self's problem, he'd be right. more to listen to you. So, we need to find out what he's muttering about and solve it to get him to trust us. Um, you seem really dedicated to the law. You know, your younger self seems really dedicated to the law. It's a facade, I assure you. I had to keep up appearances to appease my father. Right, okay. Let's talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay, but don't forget we're on a bit of a deadline here. We are indeed. Um, and we are as well. And we've reached our deadline because we are out of time. So in the next episode, we will try and figure out what he's muttering about and talk to Doc, the older Doc, and maybe work out how to solve the equation for him and get him to trust us. Uh, but that does it for this one. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, click on that like button. It really does help the channel to grow, so I do appreciate it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you're new or just haven't already done so. And I'll see you all next time.